Hello everyone, you are watching Flashpoint. I'm Gene Bailey, glad you're here. All right, so it's almost time, Phoenix in two days. Coming up this Thursday, October 20th and 21st, right there at Dream City Church here in Phoenix, Arizona. If you haven't let us know yet, is that good? I don't think that's good English. Let us know you're coming. GoVictory.com slash FP Live. It's a free event. We would just like to know you're coming. Let's talk about who's coming to talk to you. Of course, there's Lance Wall now will be there. Mario Murillo, Pastor Hank Kuhneman, Dutch Sheets, Sean Foyt, Floyd Brown uh, from Western Journal, Pastor Mark Burns, David Harris Jr., and our friend Mike Lindell. It's going to be a great great two nights. We want to see you there. Just let us know you're coming. Listen, this is the, our last big event for Flashpoint. We're at several other smaller ones, but our last big Flashpoint live uh, until the end of the year. But we're planning for next year. Don't worry. We've got lots of stuff in the hopper that we're working on, and we'll give you those details. In fact, the best way to get those details is to sign up your Flashpoint Army email list. Go to govictory.com slash FP sign up. And listen, if you're using a Yahoo or a Gmail account, I suggest go get you another account and sign up because we are being censored uh, on with the Google, the Gmail, and with Yahoo and some others. So that's why some of you, if you have one of those, you haven't been getting our emails, but you should be getting at least one a week, go change it. Go change your email and re-sign up, okay? Uh, we'll see. And we'll be looking for other ways to connect with you very soon in the new year. Well, let me bring in my three compadres, Mario Murillo, Pastor Hank Kuman, and Lance Walnell. Welcome, gentlemen. Good to see you. Good to see you, Gene. Good to see you, Gene. Yeah, we're gonna, it's good to have everybody back in the room again. It's uh, We had a week, and Pastor Hank, you know, was uh, out. Pastor Hank, you look all rested, and you, you're, you're ready to go yeah. now? I was vacationing, and I'm glad to be back, Pastor Gene, to not answer any questions tonight. <laughs> that's what that's what he told me he, he's just sitting there to, he's just video tonight no audio yeah there uh, you go so all right uh and lance is uh lance and mario lance uh tell us what's new okay what's mario, I, I mario lance. Lance. lance lance you go 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 ahead mario no mario go ahead go ahead, go ahead. <laughs> well uh i'm excited about a thursday night and friday night uh that building is very special to me because Pastor Tommy Barnett, one of the greatest pastors in American history, had me to come in there for a decade. I've preached in that building 50 times, and it's very anointed. Believe me, Dream City Church, you're going to be amazed at the presence of God that's in that building. And I want to encourage everyone to come from wherever you are. And the reason we ask you to register, and I know Gene didn't ask me to say this, I just realized how important it is. You let us know you're coming. It's really exciting to know how many of you are coming. And uh, I hope if you haven't signed up, if you haven't decided, you need to decide right now. We want to see you Thursday and Friday. It's going to be amazing. It is going to be amazing. Lance, uh, give us an update. We missed you last week. Uh, mm -hmm. How are things? Woo, boy, I'll tell you what, you know, Gene, ever since I started hanging out with you guys, I, I just uh, love the press. And so it's like NBC <laughs> and and uh, Daily Beast and Rolling Stone and and they all bring up Flashpoint. And it's just so such a joy to be to be slandered with the rest of you. Well, we, we're glad to have you on board with us. <laughs> all right, limit. Let's bring on a new guy. He's not. He's been on Flashpoint before. I know you're going to really enjoy Pastor Rob McCoy, senior pastor at God Speak Calvary Chapel in Thousand Oaks. Welcome, sir, to the program. Uh, you've you've we've talked before at a Turning Point uh, event. You actually are a co-chair of Turning Point USA Faith. Uh, yes. which is America Fest is coming up in December and we'll be there. So make sure you come see us. But uh, Pastor Rob, I want to hear, you know, you're there in Thousand Oaks, California. Can California really be saved? Are we going to see some things turn around in California? Well, um, I always I always refer to Jeremiah where he goes to the potter's house. And if um, if God intends evil for a, a nation and they repent, he'll relent from the evil that he intends or the, the judgment he intends. So I, I, there's always hope for California. I'm, I'm an eternal optimist, um, to say the least. But the churches are learning how to ballot harvest. 
um, which the, the opposition has been doing for quite some time, which we believe we can win. And we're focusing where most of the secular progressives have focused, which is school boards. Right. And uh, we're in a battle right here in, in uh, the Conejo Unified School District. Uh, there was a, a, a death threat um, implied, phoned in to the superintendent of schools from somebody in Santa Barbara, some wacko, and they want to blame us for, uh, for, for that because we posted a video of the superintendent of schools um, stating that uh, catching a boy masturbating in a class uh, of eight-year-olds, you know, this, it was awful, saying that that's normal behavior, and uh, we, we posted that. And, and this is what we're facing. We've got the um, alphabet mafia coming after us, but uh, we're fighting, and it's worth fighting for. Well, you know, I really, I lived in California, Southern California for several years, and, and I don't really believe uh, the polls of what we're really seeing, that there it's, it's so blue, it, it can't be saved. Uh, you know, there was a lot of God-fearing people, and I think we have to, as a, the rest of us in the nation now, have to keep in mind we got to pray for California. But I think there's a, a lot of people, Hispanics, are, are coming out in force and showing their support uh, for conservative values like never before. And I find that all very encouraging. It, I, I'm in full agreement. We, you know, um, there's 15 million 250 thousand self-professing evangelical Christians in California, so uh, there's there's a lot of room for improvement. But we're watching people coming to church who would never darken the doors of the church. We've we've baptized twice as many people uh, in 18 months as the attendance of the church was 18 months ago. And these are people who would never darken the doors of a church. Uh, as Mario was pointing out, there is a hunger for God right now. Amen. And uh, he is the source of liberty. And so people are watching as their skate parks are being shut down, their schools are closed, their businesses are shuttered, and we're under the, you know, the tyranny of Governor Mussolini. Uh, they, they want change, and they're yeah. frustrated, and the churches uh, are responding appropriately. Not all, but many. They are. And Mario, you, you've been there a long time, and you've been, of course, doing your uh, tent meetings there. Are, are you? Do you agree with where uh, Pastor Rob is coming from? Is that what you're seeing as well with California? Well, as you see behind me, that's a picture from California. Actually, that was Hanford, California, where thousands came out. The temperature was in the 30s, and people didn't care. They were just so overwhelmed with hunger for God. California has been made miserable by wokeness. That's what, what happened. But the reason that I honor Rob is because early on, he stood against government. Amen. He opposed the lockdown. He opposed and was constantly being persecuted about it. We did the same thing in keeping our tent up no matter what. But now there's been a change. And in the atmosphere, people are desperate. They're despairing. And our crusade in November in Sacramento, in the fairgrounds, is is already building up with uh, thousands of people that are planning to attend, and and like Rob said, Pastor Rob said, they are never darkening the door of a church. Have never, That's and right, there's yeah. a whole new generation coming to God in California. Yep. That's right. And before I leave this topic, Pastor Hank, I want you to weigh in here. You know uh, yeah. what these gentlemen are bringing up is is very real. We are reaching people that we never would see inside the church. So we have to go outside the four walls of the church. You know, Mario in a tent and everything else, all the outreaches. But, you know, you're up there in Omaha, Nebraska. And the things, are you seeing the same thing where people are, there's a new new uh, harvest that's coming in that we haven't seen before? Mm -hmm. Absolutely, because there's something that exists in the earth that's called the Spirit of God and the Spirit of Truth. And the Holy Spirit is bringing truth to all the lies that is going on through the fake media, the secular media, their agenda, uh, the woke culture. And people are being awakened to truth by the Holy Spirit. So here in Omaha, Nebraska, the pa uh, church that I pastor, Lord of Hosts Church, people want that truth. And they're willing to drive hours to come to sit underneath the anointing, 
that destroys the yoke of bondage, but also to hear truth. And uh, I think about Pastor Rob out there, for example, in California. It's what I believe here in Omaha, Nebraska, Nehemiah 4, 17. One of the keys to restoration was they had to have a hammer and also a sword. And I think it's the hour that pastors and Christians, you know, especially pastors, we need to keep hammering the word of God, building up the people, but take up our sword and begin to fight for God and for country so that we can have our country back, our freedoms restored, because a lot of harshness has happened to the people. I lastly want to say this regarding California. You know, the year, years ago, the Lord said, I'm going to begin to shake the fault lines. And, uh, you know, immediately everyone's thinking about earthquakes in California, but God God was talking about those who are at fault doing the things that they're doing uh, to the, the people through the, the woke culture and, and uh, of course, their, their fraud that they have out in California. And I think what's going to fall out into the ocean is them, not California itself. And God said, California, you will see red. And what he prophesied, meaning, is there would come an anger that would lead to a righteous red rebellion that eventually will turn California conservative. It's already happening. Right. It's only going to continue to continue. And we need to rejoice because God's got his hands strong on California. Amen. All right, uh, Lance, uh, you're last here on, on the California topic because I was going to change and ask you a different question, but I want <laughs> no, to give no, no, you the I, I opportunity. Think you should change. No, no, no. You could change it. That subject's pretty much shot. We got it. We got all it. Right, California, right. California will turn around. I mean, California will turn the around. rest of the country has to See, follow folks, California. I try, I try, I try. All right. Let me well, put let, up. let me say, all right, Gene. Let See, me say one thing. Let me say one thing. So, so Pastor Rob said this. This blows my mind, right? He says 15 million. Let's not just move on from these things. 15 million Christians, evangelicals in California, only half of them are registered, and of them, I don't know. I, I think the fault line's there, Hank. I think we got a fault line right there. We got three and a half million carrying the dead weight of two thirds of the church out there. Now, Mario said something really great. He said the more miserable people get, the yeah, more receptive true. they are to the gospel. So true. let's all remember that, that no matter what happens, uh, the, uh, you know, business is booming for the kingdom of God. If you don't get under that cloud, right. then you become the one who's carrying the, uh, the rain that they're looking for. Well, that's good. That's that true. was good, Lance. Very Thank good. You. Very All right, good. let me show you this. Oh, thank you. Yeah, let me show you this real clear <laughs> politics poll uh, 22 generic. Now, Lance, you see this. You can see the swing um, in September where things went decidedly Republican. This is an average. Uh, what we're seeing is going more red than blue. Uh, are you, do you believe this is a are they abandoning uh, Bidenomics or Bidenflation? <laughs> uh, Look, do you see re that? Re real clear politics, Politico, Trafalgar, all of them are sampling leaning left. If that's what that graph says, I promise you it's twice as big. All right. No doubt about it. I mean, there are races tightening up right now, Gene, that nobody thought was even in the running. It's true. You got up in New, New York, York, the governor's Governor race is tightening up in Colorado. Right. Everywhere you look, because, listen, the country's talking about the economy, about crime, about, about the border, and the Democrats are talking about your transgender burdens, and we're going to preserve the right to an abortion. They're completely out of touch with the agenda of people, and that's what you can count on. These these Washington elites are so out of touch with the American people that a backlash is about to be manifest. Uh, and I believe the backlash has already started. Look at this yeah. poll. This is uh, 2022 generic Harvard Harris poll shows Republicans are up 53 to 47. That's a six point swing. Rasmussen says Republicans are up 48 to 41 percent. Uh, CBS, I don't know what they were thinking. They're actually reporting a two point gain in Republicans to 47 to 45. Trafalgar, Republicans 48 to 43. This shows a huge and I, I like the way you put it, Lance, what we think, uh, no matter how much left leaning we know these things are, if they will actually admit this, that shows just how far mm -hmm. it really has come. When you see that, Pastor Rob, does that give you hope? What does that mean to you when you see those numbers? Well, like I said earlier, I, I, I'm an eternal optimist and victory is not determined by the outcome, but by the obedience. And But what is exciting to me is 
truth is is always ridiculed and then it's violently opposed and then it's considered self-evident. And we're contending once again in the public square where the church abandoned the ecclesia 50 plus years ago, we're now contending for the welfare of our neighbors. We're starting to realize that that politics is the highest form of community because it combines morality with sociability, how we get along. And, and the church is now taking that place where it was always meant to be. It, it's not to carry the sword, but only a moral people can govern a republic. So it is thrilling to me to see the, the, the folks awakening because when they awaken, then the revival comes. Yeah. And, and I, I'm thrilled by it. I, I agree. It is thrilling. And I love the fact you brought it revival because that's what we're all believing here for. All right, look at this uh, from Byron York, New, New York Times poll. All right, so take that into account. They're saying the Biden job approval is 39 percent, Lance. GOP is up 4 percent generic ballot. But this is the part I want to get to. And Lance, I'll let you first on this. The economy inflation, 44 percent. So that's what they're concerned about. But notice abortions only at 5 percent. Trump leads 45 to 44 in a 24 matchup. That's kind of whatever. That's two years away. I don't think that means anything right now. But the point here, Lance, is that if economy mm -hmm. is important, now I don't think this is a shock, but what is shocking to me is how much you see the left pushing and the progressives are pushing abortion. Like this is the most important thing in the world right now. we got to get this changed. But this shows New York Times says... That's not the case. People are more concerned about the economy. Lance. As Napoleon said, never interrupt your enemy when he's in the process of making a mistake. Uh, they're doubling down on protecting a woman's reproductive rights when the women aren't even talking about it. In fact, one of the really f interesting data points is the number of women that are actually defecting from the Democratic Party over towards uh, conservative options because of crime and lawlessness and because of the intrusion of weird, woke agendas into the classrooms of little Johnny and Susie. So the left is, uh, I, I just think that, you know, it, was, it wasn't in a biblical quote, but whom the gods would destroy, they first make mad. I think that God is in the process right now plucking rationality right out of the brains of, of the, um, and you know who knows it? Obama knows it. And the, uh, and the guys that, are, that, that actually are, are shrewd at this, they're, they're trying to warn their party. They're saying, man, you guys are going too far out. Normally, what the smart, deceptive politician does is he makes believe he's a centrist. Right. These guys aren't. They're doubling down on dumb things. So it could be that either God is allowing the fruit to become manifest to the American people or the American people, I'm praying for them, that they'll have the discerning to recognize uh, how bad bad is and that they don't compromise when they have the chance, the one chance to deal with it is now. You're not going to sure. probably get this a lot later. That's true. In fact, let me show you, you, you brought up women. We've got that graphic I want to show. Uh, the biggest shift from women who, so keep in mind, these are women that say they're independent. In September, they favored Democrats by 14 points. Now independent women backed Republicans of 18 points. Uh, there it is. That is a huge shift. You're talking, that's a 32-point swing. Mm -hmm. that's, that's unheard massive. of. That's unheard of. Massive, massive. massive. So, you know, and I, I, you see all of this. People are waking up here, Pastor Hank. And I think when we see yes, this, they are. you know, it's, it's encouraging. Mm -hmm. yeah. But at the same time, we keep telling people, you got to keep your foot on the gas because mm -hmm. Typically, Amen. believers have a way of going, oh, great, our guy got in, we're done, let's go home, and, mm -hmm. and not keeping at it. But what we've talked about, and I think Lance brought it up from the beginning, is that we're getting involved at that local level. It's just what the Constitution taught us mm -hmm. to go from the bottom up, not that we don't pray to get some of these yahoos out of there at the top, but we've got to start where, we're, where we are at the bottom of the chain here, and that's that school board. It's very important. Getting your public yeah, library, right. keep, keep getting all those things out of there you want to have. All right, let me show you this. Uh, <clears throat> this graphic, guys, number four. This is how it started versus how it's going. All right, so look at that. How it started the last day under President Trump on the left, the red side, versus how's it going 
uh, under Biden today. All right. So the last day under Trump, inflation was at 1.4 percent. Today, the inflation's at 8.3%. Now, Mario, when I see this 8.3% inflation rate, I have, I have a suspicion that the inflation rate is much higher than this 8.3. I think even that has been tempered down. But that changes, this goes back to what we were talking about, people coming to tent yeah. meetings, people getting desperate. Uh, you know, I talked about the other night about the fact um, what it would cost me to fill my my truck up with gas today versus two years ago. There was a time in my life where I would have been like, <clears throat> I guess I'm uh, staying home this week. <laughs> you yep. know, I'm not going yep. anywhere. You know, just nope. be, but there's the majority of the American public is in that category. So they're looking at all of this and seeing that. Do you think we really had an 8.3 uh, inflation or, or do you think it's higher? Way higher. And uh, I want to tell you something. The Bible talks about he would turn them over to a delusion so that they would believe a lie. Because there was all of this interference, I'll call it that, to see if the AI will leave me alone. All this interference, this trend is not new. It's only now. And the interesting thing, the, the Democratic high echelon doesn't believe this. That's why they keep talking about abortion. That's why they keep pushing the alphabet agenda, because they believe that's what Americans want, because they don't realize that America's, but nobody got to hear it. Now it's clear. And the difference now is, is that even if legislation doesn't come forth and all of the shenanigans aren't revealed from the too many poll watchers, too many new conservative volunteers, their eyes and ears everywhere that weren't before, that's going to discourage. Not only that, but Zuckerberg is not going to give the 400 million like he did last time. So the funding right. isn't there. This is why these these statistics aren't really telling the story. America is way ahead of the curve on the left uh, against the left. Yeah. Uh, and we, right. we're finding out right now. Amen. All right. I'm going to go to Pastor Rob since he's the resident Californian at the moment. Uh, on this next point, let's go back to the chart. Uh, last day under Trump, the average gas price was two dollars and thirty nine cents a gallon. Today, today, the gas price is three seventy six. Uh, where, where, where in California can I find it for three seventy six? <laughs> yeah, it's nowhere. Uh, that's yeah, the yeah. national. That's the national average. Right. But this has affected California. When I lived in California, I mean, it was many years ago, and it was still uh, very high gas prices. But the, but I mean, are you seeing this uh, with your church people involved in your church? Are you seeing oh. that this take its effect? Yeah, you, you you get a cashectomy every time you go to the pump. Uh, it's it's it, it, to, to get uh, gasoline under $4 a gallon in California would be a miracle. We have $1.68 added to every gallon just in taxes alone in this state. And then our, 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 our supply is diminished, our ability to get it. We, we, we're very oil rich, but we don't, we don't uh, produce any of it, do that by fossil fuels. And, and, and th th they're so tone deaf uh, this this administration under Governor Mussolini that they're doubling down that California is not going to be the abortion destination uh, location where you can right. come you know up to the third trimester and with AB 2223 it, it, it's 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 written where it appears even 30 days after the birth of the child I mean it's so barbaric uh, what they're emphasizing while they're watching the entire state implode and as um, uh, McClintock said, Congressman McClintock, he said, what can cause someone to leave the beauty of California? And when I say beauty of California, I can be surfing in the morning. I can be snow skiing in the afternoon and dirt bike riding at sunset all in one day in the beauty of California. And, and what would cause someone to leave California for the deserts of Nevada? Forgive me, but maybe the wastelands of certain parts of Texas. One thing, bad government, and uh, and they're doubling down, and people, it, it's going to be a, a huge backlash. Uh, hang on. I believe you're right, even though I don't think Texas has much wastelands. Jeez. Uh oh, <laughs> you have been to West Texas? I mean, <laughs> yes, I have, and you are correct, sir. You are correct. All right, Pastor Hank, 
But let's go back to the graphic. I'll give this one to you, Pastor Hank. Uh, this one, I knew this had affected, but I'm, I, you know, okay. Grocery prices down there, third from the bottom. 3.7% grocery price increase to 13.5. Now, I don't know. Has anybody gone to try buy a gallon of milk recently? You see, I mean, it's several yeah. dollars higher than what it used to be. I mean, this is uh, staggering. Mm -hmm. And people are trying to feed their families. Their money right. doesn't go as far. Um, what's our role? Well, when I say our, <clears throat> Pastor Hank, what's our role as pastors? What, how do we come alongside and give the people hope during this season? Well, first, let me just back up to your graphic. First of all, the, the, the graphic reflects this. You know, under Donald Trump, we had MAGA, making America great again. Under Biden, we have MABA, make America Biden awful. And people have had enough. And it's going to reflect in the polls. We've mentioned twice about a backlash. I think it's going to be a backside spanking that is coming to these people and what they're doing to our country. And this is why pastors have got to continue to uh, you know, encourage their congregations, teach faith, teach them about giving in times of uh, hardship, because every time you can see in scripture, when you sow, especially in hard times, it's when you get some of your greatest harvest. But I'm here to tell you, one of the things you mentioned even about gas prices, I think that people are going to start, and I think they're really doing it right now. They're riding donkeys and rhinos all the way and it's going to reflect. We're going to see a turnaround in America. We're going to start seeing some of these things change because don't forget, people often mention about uh, the parting of the Red Sea. Well, one thing that happened is they began to walk on dry land. In other words, the land appeared, a sense of normal uh, appeared, stability appeared, and ultimately it was a new place that God brought a whole nation through after he drowned the Egyptians, a socialistic type government and they absolutely had their day and this is exactly where their agenda is heading they're about to drown all of their efforts all of their agenda and God is going to set this nation free and we're going to come into 2020 free you watch how there's coming a liberating in the earth uh, at the expense of the hand of God oh, amen amen I, I agree with that. okay Lance before we go to the break I'm, I'm going to give you two or three of these things and you can comment here uh, 30 year mortgage rates were at 2.65 under Trump, uh, 7.08, 30 year now. And, Gee, and there, Gee, and Gee, why, why are you drilling down on these numbers? What is this obsession with this? I, I, of I've, course, I, it's terrible. It's terrible. All right. Yeah, so, okay. so why, why am I doing it? Why am I doing it? Because, believe it or not, Lance, there are still people out there who profess to be a believer, profess to be a conservative. They're going, ah, oh, it's not so bad. Right. You know, let's give Biden a little bit more. No, you know, we, these are, no, these no, are no, good I, numbers. I, so, I mean, when you see the, this. Here's the. All right. So here's my question. Will you let me say something? No, because I'm going to ask something. a question. <laughs> my question is. <laughs> well, I had a good question. All right. So at 7.08 percent right there right now on mortgage rates. I say this because it's where people live. I don't know how uh, the younger generation, is. it's a struggle to get a house, to get the down payment and qualify now in, in this economy. It's, it's, a tough, yeah. it's a tough road to go. But I don't think we're done seeing this, uh, this raise, uh, this, this mortgage rate. I think it's still going to go up. Do you, do you think so? Or do you think we're, uh, have we hit the top? Oh, oh, oh. The, the mortgage rate's going to go up. Inflation is gonna, it's gonna get go up, up, up. It's gonna be like Jimmy Carter, up there in double digits. We're gonna have gas lines going. Wait till the winter hits. Has been impacted by Biden's bizarre environmentalist extremism. And then look at the rents. You know what the big number there is? Young people cannot afford to buy homes, and many of them are returning back to their parents. This, this is going to be a really interesting period of time because they, in order to survive, they can't afford to be out there renting. It's going to be very difficult except for people that have the knowledge and the wisdom and the patience to be able to understand what to do, because there's going to be opportunities in the midst of this economic shaking. There's going to be properties that are going to be available, and there's going to be strategies that are available. But the reason I'm laughing, Gene, is because the number one threat, I don't think, is the Christians watching this program especially that are, you know, uh, needing to be convinced. I mean, if they're watching us from week to week, uh, you know, they, they're convinced of something. I'm concerned about the apathetic Christians 
exactly. who are who, because they are so uh, that they've crossed their arms. They resigned themselves to say, well, I don't think anything. I, they're just going to steal it again. That's where the biggest danger for us is. Uh, because we are flooding the zone, because we're doing the precinct strategies, because in Virginia, we proved that if you have a 90 or 95 percent um, presence in these precincts, as not only a poll watcher and observer, but someone who can actually be a, a judge on, 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 on the process, you can make the devil behave himself if you're present to bind him. So uh, we're going to have to go there. My confidence is Nehemiah chapter 4, verse 7, Gene, for all our word people. When Nehemiah got to the midway, the, middle, the midpoint of the wall, the gaps were getting closed. The movement was coming together. They were restoring what the devil stole. And then we've got to watch because his enemies became very angry when they saw that they were losing ground. We should be praying and thinking proactively about how they're going to conspire right. together once we succeed in this next phase, because they're not going to go politely into the night. No, they're not. And that's great. Thank you, Lance. You went where I wanted to go. We have a hope. Yeah. We don't have to buy into all of this, uh, but we do have to be educated and we have to be aware and we have to be ready to follow Holy Spirit and what he's telling you to do. All right, we're going to take a break. We come back. We're going to see if Lance is still on the program. Don't go away. We'll be right back. Welcome back to the second half of Flashpoint. So much more ground to cover. Lance is still here. So we'll guess we'll keep going. All right. So America stands starting at six o'clock central. That's seven Eastern. We will be live right here on the Victory Channel as well uh, as a lot of other outlets. You need to find out more where we're at that special night. Go to americastands.us and get all the information. But here's something else you're going to get on that website. When you go to that website, there is a feature right there. There's a, a snapshot of it right there. That's going to take you to a map uh, the, of the United States. You click on your state and you can drill down where you need to go to find information. A lot more stuff. There's video links and stuff on there. This is the place. So go to that website for extra information uh, and you can find out more about what's happening in your state, your city, and follow along with us. And uh, we'll be there. Uh, Flashpoint will be there. I'll be hosting that evening along with a star-studded group of people that will be uh, telling us what's going on. David Barton, Michelle Bachman, Lance Wall now, and all kinds of great folks are going to be there to help us show you exactly what's happening. You will not find a result to the... We were the first to call it in 2016, and we'll be the first to give you the most accurate information at the last, at the earliest possible moment. So you want to make sure you watch us, America Stands. Go to the website. You can find out more about that. Uh, of course, Phoenix coming up this week. I want to see you there. I want you to be there. There's a lot of great things. I, there's some possible surprises there that you might, uh, I can't uh, talk about them because I don't know if they're really going to happen. I don't want you to be upset with me. Uh, but we've got some possible surprises coming and we would love to see you there. Now, this Thursday show uh, will be still air at the normal time, this, this time slot, 7 p.m. Central, 8 Eastern. But we will be live from the special uh, Flashpoint scene there. Behind the scenes, we'll be showing you what's going on behind the stuff. We'll be out working the, with the audience, the people in the line. We're going to have a lot of stuff that you don't normally see. Uh, kind of wrapping up the whole Flashpoint live season that night will be coming to you live from 7 to 8 Central Time. Then joining you back with the event live at 9 Central, 10 Eastern, uh, from live from Phoenix for Flashpoint Live. So make sure you're there. Come join if you haven't signed up to let us know you're coming. It's not too late. Go victory.com slash FP live and we'll see you there. All right. Moving along, let's talk about, uh, you know, as we've moved into this there's a lot of races now that are starting to gel. We're starting to see who the people really are. One of those is coming from the state of Georgia with Warnock and Walker. Watch this from Jesse Waters. Be right back. That race in Georgia is heating up and the Democrats will do just about anything to keep their man Raphael Warnock in office. But it seems like every day more disturbing information comes out about Warnock, like his past as a slumlord. Warnick's the head of the 
Ebenezer Baptist Church, which owns an apartment complex in the MLK Village in Atlanta. The place is disgusting. According to the Free Beacon, there's trash everywhere. Elevators are broken. People in wheelchairs are being told to walk up the stairs. Instead of taking care of the building and its residents, the church decided to pay Warnick thousands of dollars a month to cover his housing costs. And you better believe he does not live here. Not only that, residents were evicted for being short $28. But the senator doesn't care. All right. So this came out. This whole little topic came out in the recent debate. So I want to play you now one minute from that debate and watch this little interchange between Warnock and Walker. Watch. Because he won't answer that about evicting the people from the church. And I told him I will pay that. I'll pay their salary. You're evicting them right now. We, we, have, this whole we, have, time. Not, we have not evicted. Oof. We have not evicted those I tenants. didn't write the article. We... We, you, you're, you're, I didn't we, write the article. We, and most of the people know, are let me, my time. I'm okay very with the discussion. If we, you start talking me, yes. over each other, okay, we, we have, have to not, We have not let you evicted speak, the tenants. Speak, Senator. And, and he should take that money and pay it back to the veterans that he exploited while yeah, pretending like, to like run that too. And, a uh, not See, you can tell that he's not desperate because if he had read in that thing, he would have saw that I had nothing to do with that. But he is so desperate right now, and he really wants that seat. He's now telling you, I didn't evict anyone. It is written in the paper. I didn't do this. Well, Senator, you did. And it's okay to speak the truth. Do not bear false witness, Senator. Do not bear false witness. Mr. Walker, to keep this moving, I want to follow up with can you. I, you have been very open. All right. So do not bear false witness. So what is the Democratic mayor of South Fulton have to say about that little exchange. Watch. Hearing his hearing his answer about uh, his church's um, uh, his church is evicting people. It 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 made me a little uh, queasy. Made me a little queasy, Mario. Um, do you think the tarnish? You think the the polish is worn off here on Raphael Warnock? Well, I'll tell you what, I think he's in trouble. He's calling himself a minister of the gospel. And he's in a church that has a really sacred history. And for him to bear false witness, which has been confirmed, it, it, it's an indictment. But I think it's about time this hypocrisy ended. It's about time the Democrats were relieved of their mask that they are somehow Christian, that they are somehow patriotic, or that they're for equality. Every single domino is falling right now. Starting with Black Lives Matter, it went to the riots in Portland, day after day, headline after headline, statistic after statistic shows that this is an elite cadre of people suffocating to hold on to power at the expense of truth, at the expense of our future, and now with a war on our children. And, and it reminds me of that moment in the book of Esther when Haman fell on Esther as the king was walking in. That's exactly what happened. And, and before the command came out of his mouth, they covered his face. We we're watching the judgment of God on a hypocritical evil. They might have been safe if they hadn't introduced the idea that they were actually preachers. And I know that the hand of God is in this situation like very few times I've ever seen in my life. Uh, let me go to Rob, Pastor Rob McCoy. Rob, how do we know who's telling the truth? Well, I just, I, I look at, uh, well, he calls himself Pastor Warnock and uh, he's, he's pro-choice to the third trimester. Now you take, you take, 13% of the population of America is black. You cut that in half, six and a half, six and a half, male, female. Take the six and a half percent female and reduce it to childbearing years. That's 4% of America's population is responsible for 40% of the abortions. It's a holocaust on the black community. And Reverend Warnock is participating in the obliteration of his own people, declaring by, 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 by being so pro-choice to the third trimester. Herschel Walker, bless his heart, he's a good man. He's he, he's he's fighting uh, for that position. That look, he's not perfect. He's got his issues, no doubt. But the press has reported, and this is a liberal press reporting evictions, and and people see it. So it's time for this reverend 
to go. Uh, and, and as Mario said, this, this, is, this, this is an affront to God. Yeah. This, this is bad. It is bad. It is bad indeed. It's why you pray, you get educated. So much is going on mm -hmm. since 2020. You guys know we've covered all the time here. Uh, here with some late breaking news, I want to bring in our friend John Graves from Million Voices. John, what's bring us up to date. What's going on? You know, it's kind of an interesting segue. There's a new uh, report that just got filed with the Georgia Secretary of State. We're talking about the Georgia Sentinel, and there is a new report that's come out, 196 pages, that demonstrates irrefutably the facts that there are irregularities and anomalies in the software where the number of people who are coming in in the primary this year, in 2020, and so it's the same system, same software, about 20% error rates of, of the people that are coming in are not my, matching the ballots, Gene. And what's fascinating is it's in Georgia. I agree with what Pastor McCoy just said, but my favorite line of that whole thing is when Walker looked at him and said, you need to be baptizing these babies, not aborting them. Yeah, it was good. All right, so, so John, in this, I can, he, I can feel Americans especially watching this go, okay, so how, is that anything new that we need? I mean, how does that, does that change anything? Uh, how is this news different than what we've heard before? Okay, so it's completely different. It's not related to the 2,000 mules. It's not Zuckerbuck's 420 million in the rigged. It's not the other work that's been, you've heard about. These are Dominion systems, but this is completely different because what they're saying here admitted that in a county in Tennessee, there were anomalies. So that came out this year. Didn't get much traction because Tennessee wasn't a big swing state. So what this group in Georgia did is they went to all 195 counties in Georgia and said, under the Freedom of Information Act, please give us these logs. We want to see if the same thing happened here that the United States, this is not a, a Democrat Republican. This is the government saying there's a problem here in these systems. Those also were Dominion. And, and they got 66 of the counties to give them the reports, give them the logs. 97% of them had the same exact thing. They're even calling it because it's Williamson County that the United States are going to fix. They're not saying that. All they're saying is we want an investigation. So the call to action is investigate it, Georgia and the United States. So how do we, John, how do we pray? Uh, what should we be praying for with this? I know the story will keep following so, up with it, but uh, right now, how yeah. should we be praying about this? Well, there's Judge William Duffy Jr. is the guy that, that, that really we need to pray for. He's one of the people in the Georgia, and hopefully even the governor. Governor Kemp is still there, but he's the governor. All that needs to happen is that we demand an investigation to these people. And, and frankly, I used to work at a convenience store when I was in high school. And at the end of every day, we took the receipt, the total that came in, and we took the cash that was in the drawer, and those needed to match. They could print those off very simply, nothing exotic. Ask the governor every day, just print it off. And the people who came in here and put their names in, do those match? That's all we want to know. That'll take care of 20% of the problems that are happening here. And then somebody can look at it later. Amen. All right. Well, we're going to follow the story. But before we leave that topic, John, uh, since you're following this so closely for us, uh, would you pray? Let's pray for, as for, for Judge yeah. William Duffy, Jr. I'd do it. God, God, I just uh, thank you that the truth, it's never too late for us to continue to do it. Just like Gene said earlier, the worst thing we can do is let Satan or evil have the satisfaction of us not staying involved, us not using our voice. I pray that the, the saints, the regular uh, men and women that are out there doing the right thing would continue to pray intercede and watch you move just like you did with Nehemiah, the way you did with Esther in the name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. Thank you, John. We following up on that. As soon as you have anything, let us know. Okay. All right. Uh, all right, Lance. So you see this, uh, tell me what you're, what you're thinking as we could start to wrap up here. Are you concerned uh, we're going to see something real or do you think we're going to we should be concerned about well, two, something happening. Two, two thoughts. One, that's the first time I saw the six box technique on the show. I felt like the Brady Bunch there for a moment. We had everybody there. I like that idea. It's yeah. the six of us. Here's what, I, here's what I'm thinking, Gene. I listened to an, a spirited debate this week about this very reason. Some of the believers out there, 
Uh, someone's going to take it from me. So they're waiting to the last minute. The argument against that is that you could be disrupted on the last day. You could be blocked. You could have every intention to get it. You could come up and keep it. For then, of course, if the left is going to steal it, in order for them to steal it, they have to have the algorithm, right? They have to be able to match, uh, somehow get the ballots to match what they have to catch up with to overtake. I think that uh, I'm of the uh, opinion that you uh, a day or two ahead of time, rather than sit there in the long lines, get discouraged, you get distracted, because it's really important that all out there. And I, and I really do believe that we have to remember, you know, Ron DeSantis is the number one most popular Republican candidate. Trump obviously has the affection of the party. But if you're going to be going by a national poll, DeSantis is, uh, is, is the front ranking Republican. But here's the interesting thing. Most people forget this powerful governor only got in and the guy that could have been governor ended up on like 13 charges, uh, legal charges were brought against him. He was a disaster. So those 30,000 Christians, perhaps, that were wondering, I don't know what difference my vote's going to make, actually put DeSantis in office. Uh, That's good. That's good. Good, good, good information there. All right. So, gentlemen, let me go around the room here and wrap up. Uh, we'll let you go first, Pastor Rob. Thanks for joining us tonight. Uh, final thoughts from tonight? Well, I, I, I'm in agreement with Lance in the sense that uh, apathy uh, is not is not justification, and and to to feel as though you can't make a difference, so you're not going to participate. And that's just wrong. You're you're to be obedient. And uh, I, I won I won my council seat, by, and we were making phone calls to the very last minute on. So uh, I would say for, for folks who wonder what the best version of the Bible is, New King James, King James Version, ESV, NIV, I always say it's, it's the one you read. And I would say it, it, enough of giving up. It's, it's time to fight. Mm, that's good. Mario Marillo. You know, we believe in the word of faith, that in sowing and reaping, folks. And we have to see a sowing into the future of America with the thought of what man is going to do with it, but what God is going to do with your seed. He's going to honor it. He's going to protect it. And I believe that we do it in faith. That's what my wife and I are going to do. And we believe in protecting the freedom to preach the gospel in America. That's why I'm politically active, to protect the freedom to preach the gospel. That's what I'm all about. Amen. And we have to protect that freedom and we have to, we must protect that. Pastor Hank, final thoughts? You know, I'm excited about Phoenix because, you know, the news has been projecting their propaganda, their perspective, their lies. Politicians have been declaring their agendas, but God has his perspective. And when I was on vacation this last week, I had two spiritual dreams. I've been hearing the voice of God and I'm going to release in Phoenix what God said about the midterms and what he's saying about uh, 2023. And I'm telling you, great things are up ahead. And so I want to make sure that you're there in Phoenix to hear what God's going to say. Amen. Well, I'm looking forward to Phoenix. We all are. Need to make sure you guys are there. All right. So Mike Lindell is going to join us there as well. Uh, I want to play this one minute clip. If you may have seen this on social media uh, of what Mike Lindell has been doing. Watch. It's devastating. On top of the bad economy and everything else going around, then they lose all their physical belongings. Absolutely devastating. But Samaritan's Purse is always there. I felt very blessed to be able to go by you know, neighborhood to neighborhood, giving out my pillows, my blankets, and uh, uh, my Bible pillows for the children. And Samaritan Purse makes that possible for, for us, for my employees and my bill to be able to help. It's out of the news right away. They feel like they're forgotten. And uh, just having Samaritan's Purse there was a, it's a big thing to them. It gives them hope that there's people out there that care. Well, praying for these communities that, that they have the courage to get through, you know, not to give up. And I'm saying also to pray for a Samaritan's Purse. If you're out there to volunteer, you can go to SamaritansPurse.org and uh, volunteer. Here at the Victory Channel, Flashpoint, and Kenneth Copeland Ministries, we do partner with Samaritan's Purse on Outreach. So we absolutely applaud what they've done and what Mike Lindell has done. Um, you know, Lance, you know, there's nothing like uh, 
seeing Mike Lindell walk up and give you a free pillow. I'll tell you what, nothing like Mike Lindell. And he's everywhere. He's ubiquitous. He everywhere I turn around, Mike's there. He's even gonna, is he going to be with us in Phoenix? He is going to be with us in Phoenix. I thought so. Yeah. All right. So before we go, we got three minutes here. Lance, would you pray for us and take us out? There we go. <laughs> I knew that was going to come eventually. <laughs> Thank you, Rob, for surviving your first official flight with us as the crew yeah. in the cabin. Thanks for I just want to say to the Flashpoint audience, you guys always want to come to these live events. I'm getting so sentimental, Gene. You're saying it's the last time we're getting together this year. I'm feeling we're all verklempt. But, yeah. we're, you know, it is our last physical get-together. But uh, Mario and Hank and Gene and I are friends. Four separate ministries. We love working together every chance we get. That unity, that faith is what's helping to build and edify the body of Christ. Amen. I'm praying for a special Amen. anointing, Gene, on our gathering in Phoenix, yeah. that God will prepare Thank our going Lord, out, Jesus. our coming in, that the place will be filled with a spirit of uh, expectation, the power of God. Yes. And I ask the Lord to strengthen everyone that's watching right now everyone that's listening, that you will have the spirit of faith, the spirit of Caleb, the spirit of Joshua, to know that God has already gone before you and given you territory in the enemy's camp, and it's just up to you to obey God, go in and occupy. I thank you, Amen. Lord, for the spirit of faith and joy in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. All Amen. right, Pastor Rob, I'll let you go again. You got anything else to say? What are you going to say? What are you going to you can, t you can talk about Flashpoint to others. It's okay. Well, I, you know, we, uh, we've, been, we've been permanently banned from YouTube, our church has, uh, which is quite an honor, honestly. And, uh, and it's, it's, it's Flashpoint, and it's, it's the, the alternative media that is going to save this nation because the truth is never afraid of a lie, but a lie can't survive in the presence of truth. And so they have to censor you in order to put forward their propaganda but day in and day out, your viewers, your listeners, your supporters, they make the truth uh, being able to be disseminated across this country. And I'm grateful to be a part of this. And thank you for including me. Um, we're, we, we would have we been lost uh, when we were going under the scrutiny of the tyranny without you.